Okay, we started talking about organic chemistry, which is the chemistry of carbon containing compounds. And carbon does these really interesting um, bonding types because they have four valence electrons. Um, carbon atoms have four valence electrons and they like to share uh, these electrons in order to make a full octet and a full valence. And they can do this in a number of different ways. And so um, kind of the interesting thing about organic molecules is they can form a number of different structures from the same component pieces and parts. And we call these things isomers. Iso, the prefix, uh, like an isosceles triangle, means that you have the triangle with the same side, same side length, right? So all of the sides in your triangle have the same length. That's an isosceles triangle. An isomer in chemistry has the same chemical formula but a different structure in some way, shape, or form. So that means that it's made up of the same component pieces, like all of the same elements, but they're just arranged in a different way. And there's basically two types that I want to talk to you about. And the first are structural isomers. Structural isomers have the same chemical formula, but a different bonding pattern. So you have to kind of physically take them apart, rearrange them, but you can use the same component pieces. You just end up with different bonding patterns. So I talked a little about naming in my last video, and this is an alkane because I have all single bonds here, and it's an alkane that's made up of five carbons. So think about the name of that for a second, and you'll say, all right, well, I know that it's an alkane, so my ending is going to be A-N-E, and five carbons means that it's pentane. So that's my straight chain carbon here, pentane, straight chain hydrocarbon. For Excuse me. So pentane is my straight chain. Now, <clears throat> a structural isomer is this thing could be if I rearrange some pieces of it. I'm using all of the same parts. So I have five carbons. Here's my chemical formula. And I have five, 10, 11, 12 hydrogens. Okay, so that's my chemical formula for pentane. If I was to cut through this bond right here and swap this whole piece, I'm going to use a couple colors here. If I swap this piece with this hydrogen right here and trade places here, then I might end up with a structure that looks like this. I have four carbons now in a row, and then I have a carbon coming off here, right? That's this one right here. And then instead, I now have a hydrogen here in the place of this guy. I still had hydrogens here. This one still has all the hydrogens attached to it that it had before. This one has the hydrogen up here, etc. Nothing really changed here on this side. Okay, so <clears throat> I've rearranged this chemical formula. I've bonded it together differently. I had to completely cut apart bonds and rearrange things. That means it's an isomer, it has a different bonding pattern. And so if I look at this new structure now, I need to figure out if I still have the same component pieces. So let's look at the chemical formula. I still have five carbons. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hydrogens. So I have the same chemical formula, but I've rearranged it. And when re I rearranged it like that, I now have an isomer of pentane, but the five carbons in a row is not my longest chain anymore. So this is actually a different molecule and it's going to have different chemical properties. So even though it's made up of the same pieces, me rearranging things has caused it to be slightly different. And we call this, when we have little branches that come off of the side of this straight chain, we call it a branched alkane. And these branched alkanes are often isomers of the straight chain alkane. So you could have multiple branches. These branches can have different lengths and it can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And we're not going to go into that kind of detail in this particular video. I just wanted to introduce you to the idea of isomerism, which is um, we're rearranging things and this rearrangement is going to give us different chemical properties, even though I'm made up of the exact same element. So those are structural isomers. <clears throat> same chemical formula, different bonding arrangement. 
Now the other type of isomer that I want to talk about are called cis-trans isomers. And they're actually a type of stereoisomers, um, which really has more to do with uh, the three-dimensional arrangement in space. So we have the same formula, but a different 3D arrangement. So this means that I have the exact same pattern of bonding. I have the exact same thing going on in terms of the connections between my atoms, but there's something that is impeding their ability to rearrange in space in the same way. And usually this impediment, at least when we're talking about cis-trans isomers, is either a ring structure or it's a double bond. And I'm gonna focus on the double bond today. And I'm going to mention the hydrocarbon ring just for clarity. Now the thing that a ring structure and a double bond both have in common is that atoms connected to them are not able to rotate in 360 degrees. So I'm going to use a skeletal diagram here. If I have a ring structure that looks like this, I'm going to make just kind of a, this is a cyclohexane because it has six carbons, one at each point here. If I have something sticking off the ring on this side and sticking off the ring on this side, now because of the way this ring is and because of the way that things are bonded together, it's just one can't easily become the other. You can sort of rotate, but it's pretty, um, it's more hindered because of the ring um, as opposed to if this was on a molecule like this, So there's six, and then if I had a chlorine coming off of each end here, these chlorines could freely rotate um, around this single bond, right? But when this single bond is now in a ring, now it's more hindered. And it's the same thing with a double bond. If I have this structure here, okay, like that. This double bond here, if I have something coming off here and something coming off here, I can't rotate around this double bond. This double bond um, hinders three-dimensional rotation, 360-degree rotation, so it's also hindered. I like to think about it with gumdrops or um, like marshmallows. If you take one toothpick and put it in between your two marshmallows, then you can rotate each of your marshmallows in 360 degrees. You can move them both ways, right? But if you take two toothpicks and you put them between your two marshmallows and then you try to rotate, it gets harder. And if you put three toothpicks in between your two marshmallows, it gets even harder still. So there's a hindrance that comes about um, when you have extra electrons that are in there or if you have a structure that doesn't allow for three-dimensional movement or 360 degree movement. So that's what allows for these cis-trans isomers to occur. So uh, let me get a new page here. Let's look at the molecule 2-butene, 2-butene. <clears throat> now the prefix but tells me that I have four carbons. And so if I draw this thing out with a structural formula, it's gonna look like this. And I know that my double bond is on the second carbon and that all of my other carbons are going to have as many think hydrogens around them as they possibly can so that carbon is making four bonds and is happy in terms of its octet. So here's 2-butene. Okay, if I was going to draw this um, as a condensed formula, then it's harder to see. The structural formula actually gives me some information about the three-dimensional arrangement. If I was to do condensed, it would look like this. And that doesn't really tell me about what's going on around this double bond. But my, um, my skeletal structure is also useful. So it might look like this. Okay. So here's one way to think about it. So here's one, two, three, four, right? In the same way that I have one, two, three, four. And remember that our skeletal diagram usually goes up and down like this. So there's no reason that it could be this way versus this way. 
It could be either one. And each one of these has different properties. I can't turn this one into this one because I can't freely rotate around this double bond. So um, they have to be named in different ways even though they are both two butene. And they're named based on the way that the other things coming off of it are going. So if you look at this one, these guys are going in opposite directions. If you look at this one, they're both going in the same direction. And the name of these isomers again are cis trans. And cis in Latin means same. And so this is cis 2 butene. And this is trans 2 butene. Okay, so trans means opposite. And cis means the same in Latin. So we're looking if they're going in opposite directions around the double bond or the same direction around a double bond. Um, these are also called, if you flip this around, it looks like this. This is the exact same molecule, I just flipped it over. It's also called the chair in the boat isomer because of kind of the visual of some of these molecules. Okay. And around any double bond like this, if you have stuff coming off of it, then you can have this possibility of having either a cis or a trans um, isomer. And these isomers are gonna have slightly different properties depending on what it is that's coming off of each side, etc. But it does allow for a completely different molecule to occur, and that molecule will have different properties. And so that's kind of the interesting thing about isomers. So just for a couple other vocabulary terms, those structural isomers that we looked at, those have the same chemical formula, but a different configuration. Configuration is the way that things are bonded together, that bonding pattern that we talked about before. And cis-trans isomers have the same chemical formula, but a different conformation, which is the way that it is three-dimensionally arranged in space. So there's a difference between the way that it's put together, like if we look at our cis-trans here, this thing is put together in the exact same way, but it's arranged differently in space, which makes it a different molecule. So it has the same chemical formula, different conformation. If we think about our branched alkanes from before, those just changed the way that these things are bonded together. This one's now attached here, this one's now attached here. I'm still made up of the same component pieces, so I have um, the same formula in a different configuration, okay? So that's for my structural isomers versus my cis-trans isomers. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to ask, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.